Hi, I'm Dan Willey, the Fruit Mentor. I'm here in California's Central Valley at the Lynn Cove Research and Extension Center to present your questions on growing citrus trees to Dr. Ashraf El Karimi, a Cooperative Extension Citrus Specialist and faculty member of the Department of Botany and Plant Science at the University of California, Riverside. Hi, Dan, let's go to the field and answer your questions. When and how should a citrus tree be watered and fertilized? Watering and fertilizing a uh, citrus tree is a very, very important issue when you plant the trees. Watering and the fertilization will control the size, the growth, and the fruiting of your tree. You have to decide when to water the tree based on the soil moisture itself. You cannot go here and see in the service here and say, okay, that is need water. No, actually the, the roots of the tree is down there. So you need to measure the soil moisture inside the soil. So for this, easily you can buy one of those soil moisture meters. So you stick it to the soil here and go deep to the depth you want. Like say for example now it's 12 inch and you can see the reading now. It's 8 out of 10 here which is good for this tree. And if you see low moisture in the soil so you need to add it. That would be depends on the, the, the soil type, the location of the tree, time of the day, lots of factors. So based on the soil moisture you can irrigate or not. About fertilization, the plants need what we call it macro elements that need to be added to the trees in a large amount. And then they have the micro element which needs to be added to the trees in a small amount. To decide when to add those fertilization, we add it in the beginning. And also, during the growth of the tree, you need to add it regularly. And sometimes you have to get your tree tested for those macro and micro elements to be able to decide when and how to add those nutrients. Sometimes we add them through the soil, powder on the soil. Sometimes we spray them like the micronutrients. Micronutrients, we prefer to spray them so we don't lose them in the soil. If you see any deficiency symptoms in the tree, it's better to get your tree tested for nutrients and see what is missing so you can add it. When growing citrus in pots, how often should I repot and how should I do it? Growing citrus trees in pots will require from you more attention regarding the irrigation or the watering, fertilizers and pruning. In the beginning, when the trees are young, they don't need too much space, so small pots will be fine until you see the roots everywhere in the pots, and that's indication of the need for transplanting or moving to another bigger pot. And when you decide to do that, just irrigate the trees really well, so you can keep the soil attached to the roots, so you don't get the roots exposed to the air, because those are evergreen trees and they are active all the time of the year, and if you expose the roots to the air, they will die. Take the tree with the roots, with the soil out from the pot and put it in the bigger pots and immediately add the soil and start irrigating the trees. Think the maximum size of the trees that you can go for that, like this kind of tree. Like here, look at the trunk here. With the bigger pots, you can have the tree uh, like this. Once you reach this size of tree, you need to keep it small and prune it from time to time to keep it at this height or the level you want. Can I transplant my orange tree to a new location without killing it? So transplanting the citrus tree can be problematic for two reasons. The first reason that we don't like to move the trees around even from your backyard to another backyard because that will help in spreading the HLB disease and the insect at uh, Asian citrus cellus, the insect that transmits the disease. The second reason also because citrus tree is an evergreen tree. They have the leaves all year round. They don't lose the leaves and the tree, including the roots, they are very active all year round. So to transplant them or move them from one location to another, say for example, I don't like this location of the tree, I want to move it here within my backyard, I can do that. But for to do that, you need to know where is the roots of this tree. The roots of this tree, it is at the limit of the canopy of the tree. Say for example, that is the limit of the canopy. If you go down here, that is the limit of the roots of the tree. So if I want to transplant it, so I have to protect the roots, all the roots here in this area. And in this case, what I would do just before uh, digging, I would irrigate the, um, the tree so I can have a good soil moisture here around the roots. And then I will dig to around one foot depth or until I don't see any roots. And then I will move the whole thing the soil with the roots 
intact and to another hole which is already prepared and put some dirt and irrigate immediately and that is how you can transplant your citrus tree safely without any problem what's a good potting mix for a citrus tree there is no specific potting mix for citrus tree you can use any potting mix you are using in your garden or in your backyard or you whatever you buy from the store but a good potting mix has to provide the soil moisture and the air for the roots of the tree those mix in the stores or any potting mix you are using should provide those too uh, just to try to avoid uh, any uh, recent organic materials at least you need to leave them for around six months the compost so they can get rid of the heat in the beginning of the process they start producing a lot of heat and this heat can be very bad for the roots of the citrus tree if you add it to the citrus tree especially in the beginning when they are young like this for citrus trees from big box stores safe to buy will they be free of disease Buying citrus trees from big box stores is safe and fine because those trees are coming from registered nurseries and those nurseries are under regulations and trees should be inspected and should be disease free. What citrus trees would be risky to purchase? We don't recommend buying citrus trees from unknown sources. For example, um, the plant sales or someone who's uh, grafting them by himself and selling to you. And sometimes we find some people selling uh, trees in the intersections and they just stop by and buying. Don't buy those trees because you don't know the source. You don't know if they are disease free or not. So if you want to buy it, just go for a very known source and buy it. How can people have their trees tested and treated for disease? You can get your citrus tree tested for diseases. If you want to do that, just contact your local citrus, University of California Cooperative Extension Advisor. It should be close to you. We have offices everywhere in the States. In each county, we have office. And he will be able to guide you through this process. And if you suspect that's HLB symptoms, you can call the hotline at CDFA website also. I have a large lemon tree that produced a lot of fruit but stopped producing a couple years ago. What should I do? Stop producing fruits from the lemon tree or any other citrus tree. It is an indicator for having a problem in a tree. It can be related to fertilizers or it can be related to some diseases. So it's better if you suspect any of this, like disease or any fertilizer problem, just to contact your local University of California Cooperative Extension Advisor. We have offices everywhere in the state. In each county, we have one office. And in each office, we have different experts you have one in each crop and they will be really happy to help you guide you through this if they need to be tested or something need to be done with the tree they will be very happy to help you on that I only planted one citrus tree do I need to hand pollinate to get fruit so the short answer for this no you don't need hand pollination or another pollinator beside your original tree of citrus the reason behind it that the flower of the citrus tree contain the male and the female organism and once it's open the bees will do all the job and move the pollen grains from either one other flower in the same tree or from other tree to your original flower and make the, the fruit set happen and you get the fruits so you don't need hand pollination or pollinators for citrus tree my citrus tree is not producing fruit should i graft to it we have more than one reason that causes citrus tree not producing fruits the first reason if you don't see any flower on the tree it means that this tree was propagated from seeds which is not normal way to propagate the citrus tree like say for example you get oranges and you like it at home and you take the seeds and plant it and get this tree and it's normal that those trees coming from seeds they would take longer time to produce fruits and uh, beside this if not the case you have to check other condition like the soil the water and the fertilizer you are using for those three look at those and see if anything is wrong you can correct it if you see all these condition is optimum and you don't see any fruits on the tree and you want to change it it's easy to change it you can cut it back and graft it and to graft it you have to get a clean buds and that is easy you can go to the website of the ccpp and order the clean buds from the variety you like and you receive it in the mail and you can easily bud it
Is it possible to plant a non-dwarf tree and restrict its height by pruning instead of buying a dwarf tree? So you don't need to buy a dwarf citrus tree to have a smaller tree. You can use the regular trees to have a smaller tree. Like this here, that is um, the Tango Mandarin. The tree is pretty small and they, by pruning, you can keep the tree small. Like if I want to have this tree in this shape right here, so I should remove everything is going out. Uh, like say, for example, here, you need to remove down this one through the pruning. So when you cut it, as we said before, you need to cut it at 45 angle like this. So the water doesn't stand on the cut. Right one here. You do the same thing it's better if you can uh, make it in a regular basis but a uh, light cut don't remove big big branches at once because when you remove big branch first you have a big cut and this big cut can be exposed to any other disease also when you have a big cut that will induce new flushes, new growth, lots of new growth. And that would be good for the Asian citrus cell as the instinct that can transmit the HLB disease. So it would be a good chance for them to go there. So to avoid this, just make it light pruning at a regular basis. You can prune it anytime. You remove any branch that is going out of the tree or out of the shape that you want. Um, it's better if you remove the branch from where it's attached to the mother branch like this one here if you can if you cannot just cut it at 45 angle like this branch here is going up there upwards and probably if I want to keep my tree short here I would remove it from here see now you keep the tree small so there is no need to buy a dwarf tree to have a smaller tree like this one is a regular tree and by pruning you can keep it um, small. Is there some way that I can protect the citrus tree to grow it in a cold area? Protecting your citrus tree during the winter from the cold weather that is a very important for your tree to keep them productive and uh, fruiting. There's so many factors that you need to take care of it. The first one is the location. You need to choose the location, a warmer location in your backyard or in your area to plant the trees. It's like here, we plant them in the foothill where uh, it's a warmer location. So the trees, they got uh, warm air during the, um, the winter. So they don't get hit too much um, with the cold weather in the winter. The other thing you need to take care of it, don't make any operation in the tree that can produce new shoots by the end of the summer. The new shoots by the end of the summer will not resist the cold temperature in the, in the winter. For example, don't cut the tree very harsh in the end of the summer during the pruning, so you induce more shoots. Those shoots will be very, very susceptible to cold temperature. And also, don't add too much nitrogen by the end of the summer to produce more shoots. Those shoots will be killed during the winter also irrigation also don't irrigate too much by the end of the summer so the trees will feel that they are going in the winter and make them more tolerant to cold temperature also there is some kind of bags that you can put it on the top of the small trees uh, they are available now they can protect the trees the young trees from the cold temperature in the winter also Click the video on the screen now to watch the next interview in this series. Thank you so much to Ashraf, and I will see you in the next video.